Hi, I'm Alex Mitchell and I'm the creator of Cancer Stories. Cancer Stories is a video diary program which is designed to help people like yourself manage their cancer. And the key aim is to record previous patients' experiences, really a wide variety of cancers. And these are patients who are genuine real patients from Leicestershire who've given their consent to uh, allow us to record their story onto DVD or the internet. What we ask those patients is really to give a brief account over 30 or 60 minutes. How did they manage with their diagnosis? And hopefully by watching their account, you'll be able to pick out some common themes from one or more of those videos. And those common themes might be things like what resources are available locally or nationally, or how do families cope, or how do people themselves manage with those awkward stages, either the initial diagnosis or the complications of treatment, or perhaps um, psychological and emotional complications, which are sometimes overlooked. So overall, we hope that by watching the video diary program, you'll be able to take some positives from other people's accounts, and hopefully that will help you better cope with your situation, whatever that is at the current time. Thanks for watching. My name is Brian Papworth and I'm 65 years old. Uh, I was born and brought up in Leicester and have lived here pretty much most of my life. Uh, I'm retired and uh, married for 40 years. Um, I have a daughter who, and twin grandsons who are almost a year old. Uh, for my career, I worked uh, in the IT industry uh, for pretty much all of it, uh, for various local employers, finally uh, finishing my career with the Alliance and Leicester Building Society. Um, and I have been retired for 10 years and have and now spent my time pursuing all, all my activities and, and hobbies uh, that, I, that please me to do. Uh, in 2012, I was diagnosed with esophageal cancer. Brian, thanks for coming in today. I appreciate you spending this time with us. Um, I'm interested in your diagnosis, first of all, because you've got an esophageal cancer, which is a less common cancer. Maybe the public don't know as much about it and what is involved in the diagnosis and treatment. How did the diagnosis come about in your case? Uh, the diagnosis took some time. <clears throat> this was because uh, my initial symptom was one of having difficulty eating and swallowing. Mm. Um, initially, um, it was I put it down to uh, uh, just a passing thing and compensated by chewing my food longer and, eat, and, and cutting food smaller. But uh, this persisted and eventually um, uh, I needed to have it looked at and, and I went to see my GP who referred me to my local hospital where I then had a, a, an endoscopy uh, which was uh, um, inconclusive in terms of it, it saw that there was some uh, issues with my esophagus uh, and referred me then to the main hospital in Leicester uh, where I then uh, had several uh, endoscopies including biopsies uh, which in turn proved inconclusive um, and uh, eventually um, the conclusion was that although no cancer was actually detected in the biopsies all of my symptoms pointed overwhelmingly to the fact that it was almost certainly a cancer and we proceeded from that point. Did you have other symptoms other than the difficulty with your swallowing at that no, point? No, the swallowing became progressively difficult mm. uh, until the point where uh, I was eating um, uh, less solid food, more soups and that kind of more, more liquid type foods. Mm. Uh, 
uh, as a consequence, I, I also lost weight, mm. uh, and um, that became quite uh, accelerated as my condition accelerated. Yes. So you had these further tests, and after a delay, you know, some toing and froing, they mm. eventually made that diagnosis. They did. Can you remember the time when they actually delivered that news that you'd yes. had esophageal had yes. so, esophageal cancer? I remember it very well, yes. How do you think it was handled, that process, and what do you remember about that day? For me, it was handled very well. Uh, I, it, it, this is very much a personal uh, a reaction because uh, everybody reacts differently. I'm a person who likes to be told things straight, mm. uh, even though they're hard. Uh, and so someone basically telling me, you have, you have esophageal cancer... Uh, but that was also followed up uh, very quickly by saying, and we can fix it. Mm -hmm. And that makes a lot of difference. Definitely. Uh, if somebody offers to help at yes. the same time, it alleviates that anxiety to some yes, extent. Yes. But also, um, there was no uh, beating around the bush. Uh, you know, although it was hard news, um, you know, it, was, it was news that I was semi-prepared for because it was uh, potentially... Uh, from literature I'd read, potentially one of the outcomes. It was the worst outcome in effect. But um, but uh, having been kind of semi-prepared by literature, mm. then uh, I, I wasn't overwhelmed. But but this is a very personal reaction. So you'd read up, you know, in advance. So you knew something. About I had been given some information on Barrett's mm. esophagus, which is what initially they they uh, the medical teams thought it might be. Yeah. Uh, so, and in there, there was the, the, the statistics on, on percentages that go on to become cancerous. Mm. Uh, so I had some, uh, 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 some uh, forewarning that there was a potential for that. Yes. Um, so you'd received this diagnosis and they offered to help. What was the next step then in terms of the actual treatment that was planned? The treatment that was planned was initially a course of chemotherapy mm. uh, to alleviate my symptoms and also to, to address the cancer uh, and, its, and, its, and its progress. Uh, and then uh, a planned operation uh, followed by, by potentially a, a, a post-operative course of chemotherapy, mm. depending upon uh, uh, the circumstances prevailing. Uh, I, I was also sent for scans, uh, PET scans and CAT scans and various things to uh, further uh, assess my tumour and, and its extent and, and, and its uh, uh, um, size and, and mm. those kinds of things. What information did you receive about the extent of it and the severity? I received uh, quite good information in terms of uh, uh, how, how big it was and to the extent that it had uh, grown into, into my esophagus. Um, and... Again, some people like to know nothing. Some people like to know everything. Uh, I got as much information as I felt comfortable with, mm -hmm. and I, I didn't need to know every single nut and bolt. Uh, but I, I did need to know enough to make me uh, realise that um, uh, not having treatment was not an option. Mm. You knew you had to go through with a certain degree of um, hard treatments that were to come. It was necessary. Yeah. Yes, it was, it was necessary. How did you find those subsequent treatments in terms of how much they affected you? Uh, they were not quite as bad as I thought they might be, mm. surprisingly enough, mm. although they were hard. I won't disguise the fact that, uh, that it is not something to shrug off. Mm. Uh, it is a hard, a hard path, mm. but... Uh, but even then, um, it, it turned out to be uh, not at the, at the most severe end that I had imagined it could be. Yeah. Talk me through the individual treatments that you had. The treatments I had were, uh, well, initially the chemotherapy uh, treatment, yes. which uh, involved uh, uh, going re uh, regular intervals over a nine-week period to the hospital and uh, having uh, drugs obviously put into me. And then also I had a pump attached to my arm, which, which uh, infused me 24 hours a day. Uh, initially, this was quite difficult because I, uh, I suffered quite a bit of pain for a few days. 
uh, until the um, uh, chemotherapy department uh, um, managed to uh, provide a pain relief regime which, uh, which managed that successfully. Mm. And from that point on, then the chemotherapy treatment I found very helpful. Mm. It, it did uh, address the tumour. Mm-hmm. I then began able to eat uh, uh, better again mm-hmm. and gain weight again until and 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 so by the the end of the chemotherapy treatment uh, i had regained a reasonable amount of weight i was eating a range of foods which was pretty much normal for me although the i had to take i had to chew things more and and but i'd, I'd actually made good progress in advance in preparation for the uh, the operation to come so that's good to hear that the chemotherapy was really working for you it was it did and um over relatively brief period over that? over not over nine weeks yeah it uh, it made a big difference mm. uh and uh, and um i think it contributed very much to my ability to take on the operation and recover uh reasonably uh you know well i think speedily yeah. afterwards well talk us through the operation now because i know the operation for esophageal cancer can be quite an extensive one it is uh I don't have a big history of medical uh, complaints and operations, so operations generally were something of a new territory for me. Um, I was admitted into the hospital the evening before. The, prior to that, the, the, I had discussed with the surgeons uh, at, at, at a bit of length what they were going to do, so I knew the mechanics of what they were going to do. Hmm. Uh, and in fact, it was quite interesting in, t- in, in, the, in, in terms of the, the, you know, the, the, the theoretical kind of side of it. But um, so I knew what they, uh, what, was, what they were going to do and therefore could envisage uh, what, what, what the end result would, would potentially be like. Um, I, I was admitted the evening before uh, and kind of uh, uh, acclimatized to hospital. And then, uh, Pretty early the next day, um, I was taken down to theatre where uh, I was reassured by the uh, the anaesthetist, uh, and and then the next thing I know, it was done. Mm. Uh, so um, it happened quickly, which was a a good thing. Um, I wasn't left to think about things for a long while. Once we once I. I gotten washed for the morning and uh, and ready as it were uh, for, for, to go uh, things proceeded very quickly yeah there's a certain advantage in getting on with what's yeah. going to happen when the next steps are kind of inevitable yes rather than drawing them out yeah i found that i found that 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 was helpful mm. uh, it left me less time to become concerned or, or worry, worried yes. or think about it or whatever yeah. it, it was get on and, and do it what do you know about the actual procedure they did and what they well, technically I, I know I, I know quite a bit about what they did yeah. uh, I mean basically they uh, detached my stomach from its moorings mm. to free it up yeah they removed my esophagus uh, and the very top portion of my stomach uh, they then fashioned my uh, as top of my stomach into a, uh, a an esophagus like tube a small length of that and then they reattach that to the rim, to the, uh, the, the where, where they had taken the my esophagus from hmm. uh, and and then uh, um, uh, stitched me back up together <laughs> okay now you were in hospital for how long after I was in hospital for two weeks three days of that the first three days of that were in intensive care yeah uh, which was very busy. It's a very busy department. I was most surprised. Sure. Uh, but uh, I was extremely well looked after. Uh, the, the, the nursing care was was extremely good, hmm. and and uh, and I was there for three days, and then I was admitted up to, onto the surgical ward, yeah. where I spent two weeks. Uh, and again, the, the period of time you spend obviously depends upon your progress and, and what occurs. Did you suffer any significant complications? Maybe I, I had a were? small infection, yeah. uh, which didn't prove significant, but did did give me a raised temperature and uh, and a, a feeling of a bit like having a, a flu mm. or cold for a, for a day or two. Again, until the, until that was overcome. Mm. Uh, also, uh, at one point, the surgeons were a little concerned about some fluid deposits in my 
in my uh, thoracic cav- cavity there mm. uh, and had that investigated. Uh, but in fact, it proved to be not, uh, uh, not in any way threatening, but was in fact part of my body's reaction to what the operation had been. Yeah. And so that, that then kind of cleared up itself. Okay. through the recovery period from okay. when you were kind of ready to go home and then after that from when i was ready to go well home. yes i mean okay. after so, two weeks or so okay so uh wh- when i was ready to go home uh, i was basically collected by my family from the hospital mm. and and taken home initially uh, uh it was very very uh, uh small beginnings uh i began by uh, walking around the house walking down my garden and back, uh, uh, trying trying to eat and drink as much as I could, uh, which is quite difficult because uh, we naturally eat three or three meals a day. Mm-hmm. Uh, with having esophagal, my esophagus removed, uh, my stomach sm- made smaller. I now need to eat more frequently and smaller meals, and this is a habit which is uh, difficult to get into. Uh, and equally, drinking. Uh, uh, amounts is is a, is a difficult habit to get into um, when normally it's a normal thing you you don't you don't do consciously you just mm. do it as part of your day uh, but I began from those small beginnings and then gradually expanded um, the distances I walked I walked to the end of the road and back I walked a little bit further down to the, the, the village newspaper shop and back um, I then uh, uh, started to um, drive again just small distances again uh, to the next next village and back kind of thing or or, or just just locally locally yeah um to regain my sense of freedom uh, and, and, and 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 a bit of choice as to what I, I could do uh and and things have just built just built from there uh and this is it it's a slow building process you can't suddenly go from uh lying on your bed uh, being able to just get up from your bed to walking three or four miles. No. It's a slow, progressive build. Sure, I understand that. It's step by step, isn't it? It is, very and much it's, so. It's important to maybe set yourself certain targets yes. Yes. and then build up gradually. Yes, and, and the targets uh, need uh, can be modest, mm. but at least uh, there's a sense of satisfaction when you get there and you know it is a measure that you know you are progressing and gives you encouragement to to keep on going. How long do you think this uh, period of rehabilitation took? It's still happening. Yes. I'm still in the middle of it. Uh, but it is progressing. I am progressing. Uh, and so uh, I'm encouraged. It isn't a straight line progression. Uh, some days you, you, uh, you feel very good and you become very tempted to, to do more than perhaps you ought to. And you might pay for it the next day. Uh, sometimes even within a day you can you can be quite good at one part of the day and then in another part of the day feel like all you want to do is to have a sit down and maybe you have another have a nap yeah um, some days you get up and you're not as good as you were last yesterday they or even two or three days ago mm. um, it isn't a straight line progression no but um, when that happens you listen to what your body tells you to do and then the next day you're feeling good again yes and you then press on again and as long as the trend is up, you're encouraged. How long are we all together then from when you had the procedure now? I had the procedure uh, in three months ago. I'm three months after my operation. Right, so it's still relatively early days for you. You know, you're, That's why you said you know, you're still in the middle of it. I, I am. I totally understand that. Yes. It, it, it's, um, in my experiences and talking with uh, other people uh, three months uh, my, my duration so far is still very early yeah. uh, but I am very encouraged by how my progress has been in those three months yes how would you compare your physical health overall now to before the diagnosis came about and I'm, I mean before you had the problem with swallowing and everything I would say I am uh, about 60 percent hmm but but gaining yes uh my strength and stamina are still low and in fact i'm finding that i gain in strength and stamina before i'm gaining in weight mm. so whilst i'm eating better 
and and taking more in and and what have you i'm not necessarily gaining significant weight at this stage but i do know that i'm gaining in strength and stamina yeah. and so that's where my my build up is going to and so my ability to walk a distance is growing uh, i'm beginning to be able to now follow some of the activities that i wasn't able to do uh, Im- immediately after my operation which i had been able to do before uh, and uh, and pick up my, the pieces of my life that's good to hear I'm interested to ask you how you coped and how what helped in the recovery process. Okay. Did you feel there were others around who helped you, who were influential? There were there were many people who were who were helpful and influential. By far the biggest uh, help and assistance uh, comes from uh, those who are near and dear to you, uh, your friends, your family, those who you see every day, uh, indeed every every minute of every day, perhaps. Uh, they are the most important in helping you and uh, they can they make a big difference yes professionally uh, there are there are many many people who, who help you professionally um, particularly helpful were uh, the assignment of a key nurse mm-hmm. uh, who, who was a, a fixed point of reference in a changing uh, cast of, of, of other professionals who, who needed to be uh, involved uh, and I found that most helpful Equally, uh, the provision of helplines uh, has proven useful uh, when anything has cropped up which has worried me or I needed uh, to seek uh, advice about uh, uh, three or four times. I found the helplines there quite useful. That's a local helpline. That's a local helpline. For esophageal cancer? For for chemotherapy predominantly. Yes. So that's useful. Definitely a valuable resource where where available. Yes. Um, Not every centre has that. No. It's nice to hear you had that option. I have used it three times. Yeah. Regarding the family input, who who did you value most and what was their role? My wife is by far the uh, most important mm. uh, character in this. Mm. Um, she has um, provided uh, care, support, um, a kick up the backside when you need it, uh, an arm around your shoulder when you need it. Um, so these kinds of things uh, you do need. You, um, they are, if you get them, they, they help you along. And, uh, and again, uh, my my. My daughter, my friends, my 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 other relatives, uh, whether they brought me presents or just come and sit and talk with me, uh, we've gone for a coffee uh, or just for a walk. Uh, it all helps. Yeah. Uh, the, the the resources of the more um, uh, kind of normal kind of, of written resources and internet resources, they're useful um, in terms of uh, you can look at them and you can. Um, uh, compare where you are perhaps with 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 uh what 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 is said Mm. Uh, but obviously you 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 tailor your own position and your own circumstances to to what you read did you ever come across anything particularly online that was valuable there are there are various uh, support groups to which you can join and contribute or just just read and look if you want yeah Uh, depending upon how much interaction you want with other people Mm. they could be a very valuable resource how do they work is it like a chat room where you type into the computer and they're on the other end or is it a posting board a bulletin board where you post a message i think they mostly follow the format of of email type postings or or, or email uh, interactions uh i i don't a chat room might might type of approach i think may be useful if depending upon where you live if you live in somewhere pretty remote that's the uh, thing that kind of ability to feel like you're in the room with someone yes maybe maybe quite useful i didn't need that because uh uh uh, my own personal network uh was was, and, and where i live meant that 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 i didn't have those kinds of issues what about one step above the chat room? That is actually having direct contact with one or two people who you might ring up, or these days you can have Skype where there's a video call. I found uh, those kinds of things quite useful. From the informational point of view, um, you know, the, the uh, tips on, on, on uh, kind of 
uh, any issues or problems you might be having or areas of difficulty, tips on how to, you know, things coming up uh, where you, you know, when you get, you know, when you, when you want to start doing this or, or when, you, when you meet this problem, this is a good way of dealing with it. Yes, this is how exactly. I found dealing with it. Those things are useful. So did you actually come across um, several um, past patients? I came been across... Through it? I came across uh, uh, two uh, people who, uh, one who had, had had something similar uh, uh, a few years ago, and, and, and I've maintained contact with him, and that has proven most invaluable. Mm. Uh, and also uh, uh, other people who were going through uh, the same operation, uh, both at slightly prior to me and slightly after me, yes. who I met during my stay in hospital. Uh, and m- mutual support while, while, during our stay there, uh, just being on the same uh, ward uh, enables you to have uh, some banter, uh, some ups and downs together, uh, and it becomes a little bit like a club, Yeah, which helps. Now, I know that there is actually a forum where patients can meet locally, mm-hmm. and that is the um, group that's held mm-hmm. at Coping With Cancer, mm-hmm. the voluntary agency. Yeah. And I think it's organised through the hospital. Mm-hmm. Have you been to that support group? I've been to one meeting. It meets quarterly, and there's only been one meeting since my discharge from hospital. So, uh, I, But I went along to that meeting. I found it useful. I went with my wife, uh, which also meant that my wife met other people's partners uh, um, and to some degree was able to share experience with those, maybe gain inf- knowledge from those and to contribute to the topics that were under discussion mm. from our particular perspective, which I did the same. Uh, and I found that useful. Again, uh, there were people of vast range of, 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 of experiences uh, from many years ago through to uh, through to myself, who, would, who was very new, yeah. uh, and and also uh, with varying degrees of of uh, um, uh, success in, in terms of uh, uh, how they were uh, uh, reacting and, and managing their conditions. Uh, there was a whole range, uh, and and seeing that and talking to these people. Uh, gives you a sense of where you are mm. in, in these things and also um, means gives you a feeling that you're not on your own. Yeah. From a kind of emotional point of view, are mm. you reasonably comfortable seeing people in different stages, whether that's more or less advanced than you? Yes. Uh, I, um, by my nature, uh, I'm, I'm um, uh, happy to, to talk with people. I'm, I'm, I'm an optimistic person. Uh, and so I, I'm, I'm more than happy to, to talk with, with people um, about my own condition and about their conditions. Uh, and, and also, I, obviously, because I, I having been through it, I, I have sympathies with them in, in their areas of difficulty, uh, even if they're not ones that I've experienced myself. Because meeting other patients can be a two-way process, can't yes. it? You value what they say, but Mm. you also can give back to them. Yes. They can get insights, support and encouragement from you. I I hope so. Uh, That was one of that was one of the main reasons that I attended. Mm. Not because just what I could get out of it, but also what I could put into it. Yes, absolutely. How would you describe your coping style? You mentioned you're kind of an optimistic person. Does that mean that you... um, have a way to deal with adversity when it comes along yes uh but this is this is this is what you do through your life from when you're a child um you you have your own nature and uh whenever life's blows come along whatever they are whether it's bereavements or whatever uh you have your strategies for dealing with them Mm. my own personal strategy is that i am by nature optimistic and i'm forward-looking and so I look to overcome the difficulties. I look to the point when I have overcome them rather than the problems uh, and the, the, the things which might weigh against it. Yes. How have you managed to deal with certain adversities in the past before this? Would you mm. feel that um, you've used a similar strategy in the past to now? In some ways, yes, in that... Uh, it, this has presented something of a challenge. Mm. The challenge is to get through it and to reclaim your life. Yes. Now, in life, you meet many challenges. 
and uh, your reaction to that, how, how you go about doing it, again, depends on your personal style. Myself, I, I like to have a plan. I like to have a target. I like to see this is how I'm going to get there. Mm. And that is my, this is my way of, of dealing with it. And consequently, uh, as I achieve my targets uh, or revise my targets, um, it gives me encouragement to, to press on mm. towards my next target. Mm. And, and the, these strategies are just ones that I have generally employed in life. And, and it, I found it's worked equally well here. Mm. When people look at how others cope with cancer, mm. it's notable people use a variety of different coping styles. Mm. A lot of them seem to be innate, i.e. they just come from the person naturally, yes. like you were saying. One of the styles is trying to combat the cancer, like psychologically. Some people call it fighting. Fighting spirit. it. Yeah, fighting spirit. Yes, I can. I can appreciate uh, some, you know, someone who adopts that strategy, who who takes this attitude that this is some kind of enemy to be fought. And I think if that's your, if that helps, if that does the job for you, then 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 why not? Mm. Um, the idea is that you you need to feel that you are winning and to know that you are winning hmm. and that um, if that approach of I'm going to beat this uh, in a kind of physical sense yeah. uh, helps you, then then that's a perfectly acceptable way of doing it. Hmm. Now, another question is within those coping styles, you mentioned this also, how much information actually helps. And, you know, in the recovery phase, do you think it's useful to try to seek out as much information as possible? I mean, there's a lot of information available now online and through other sources, aren't there, that wasn't mm. previously available? There is. This, again, is a very personal thing. Um, in my own experience, um, I have found that family members who didn't want to know anything about it, who, yeah. would, who would prefer to take each step as it comes along, guided by professionals, do as they, 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 they're advised to do, and if you like, put their trust that at the end of it, the professionals will guide them to the end result. Mm. Uh, there are the other extreme. Uh, there are people who want to know every nut and bolt, who want to know exactly where things are going to happen uh, and how big and small and long and short they are. Um, I fall in between. Uh, I need enough information to feel that I know what's going to happen, to feel that I'm, I have some uh, control and I'm forewarned. Uh, but I don't need to know every single nut and bolt. I do have trust in the professionals, and that I can and I can see where the path is taking us jointly. Because mm. uh, it is a team effort of which you are a member of the team, yes. and they are members of the team. You are working at this together. It's nice to think of that modern medical approach where you are you are a participant in your own care. You're given information and yes. consulted. Yes. You know, your opinions are, are valued yes. rather than you're just the unwell person things are done to. to yes. Because that old fashioned way does lead the person as the patient to mm. feel that they're somewhat out of control. It's yes. almost like being a victim of your disease. Yes. And sometimes the medical profession can play into that slightly. It's it's easy to do because the professionals are dealing with these things pretty much every day. Uh, so for them, uh, whilst every case is unique, there is a common thread that runs through them. And so they know where the path is leading. They've trodden it many times with, with, with people. Uh, and so it is familiar for them. Uh, but obviously for, for uh, the patient, this is very unfamiliar. Mm. Uh, and and the, um, dependent upon your personal uh, uh, reaction, it can be very tempting to, to be hands off and say, well, do what you will with me. Uh, but personally, uh, I find a, a, a team approach uh, has worked well for me and the professionals I've dealt with have by and large uh, worked in that way and, and that has helped me. Mm. That's good to hear. I'm interested to know um, where life's going for you. You know, now you can look forward a little bit and think about the longer term. And I think you were retired prior to the cancer diagnosis. Yes, I've been retired for 10 years. Yeah. Uh, so the, the cancer diagnosis was, was within the last year. Um, 
So I had already an established lifestyle mm. that I was happy with, that I had, uh, uh, I was doing the things that I wanted to do. Yeah. Uh, and so um, I, I, I had no need to search for a lifestyle yeah. uh, as such. Uh, my, uh, my aims are basically to re- return to that lifestyle because that is the one I've selected anyway. Definitely. That sounds like a good objective. One of the core things that everybody asks about is about the physical recovery. But there's also the emotional and psychological issues because you're potentially living in an area of uncertainty. You know, the cancer treatment's been successful so far, but, you know, there's that question about whether it might come back or what might happen in the future. How do you deal with that uncertainty? Life is uncertain. Um, Anything can happen any day. Uh, My past experiences of family members has has reminded me that uh, every day is uncertain. Mm. So this is no more of an uncertainty than that. Mm. And so I worry no more about this than I worry about that. Life is to be taken as it as it as it comes along. And is it on your mind about um, your own mortality or the long term future? Or no more than it would be without it. Mm. I make I make plans and provisions for my family mm. uh, in the same way that I, I've, I, would, I haven't done anyway. Uh, this place is no more uh, um, emphasis on that other than it's a reminder that these things do need to be thought about. Yeah, so that, that's good to hear. What are you doing lifestyle-wise now? Lifestyle-wise, I'm, uh, I'm beginning to pick up activities that I uh, was doing prior to my operation. I have recommenced playing golf uh, and hopefully that will uh, increase as my my strength uh, grows. Uh, I've started to follow activities like gardening, which I enjoy greatly. I've started walking, and the distances, whilst not uh, very long at the moment, are, are growing and uh, also aid the recovery. Uh, I'm beginning to uh, uh, go socialising, uh, eating with friends, albeit uh, I have to tailor my requirements uh, because they're not the same as they were originally, but but socially it means that I can participate in a social life which is not a lot different from from what it was before, uh, and I am enjoying my family life, uh, which uh, which is uh, one of the great benefits that I was looking for f- from this treatment. Brilliant. Would you say you've actually found anything new since the cancer, which could even be a positive? It's given me an opportunity to do some things which I had previously always said I was going to do and never ever quite got round to it. Uh, because I, I had an enforced period of relative inactivity or limited activity, uh, there were various things which I uh, were able to pursue uh, and in fact were, were helpful to pursue, uh, which I had cast aside because I, I, when I was active, um, uh, there was never quite time for them. Mm. Uh, hobbies, which um, uh, things like uh, I, I learnt Italian. I went on the Italian, did an Italian course. I have built a model railway. Uh, these things can be picked up and put down at, uh, at short notice. You can do them when you feel well and put them down when you don't. Uh, this kind of activity uh, were, were things that I'd always said I, well, I'll do those next year. Uh, and never got to. Well, I've done some of them, and maybe it'll encourage me to do some of the others that were uh, on the list that never got to. Yeah, that's really great. And um, in terms of your overall activity, you said you're in that improvement process still. Um, Can you still see that improvement day to day? Yes. Um, It shows in in the distances I walk, in, uh, in my stamina in doing those activities. And when I'm gardening, I can... Uh, uh, do more physical side of the the, the work. Uh, I can I can work it for, for a longer uh, um, in doing mundane tasks. Maybe even with, helping with the housework. I can do things uh, to help uh, progressively, uh, um, and that eases the load on my wife, uh, and also shows her that I'm I'm recovering as well. It sounds like you're pointing out something that's very important here, which is that. It's perhaps important not to sit and wait for the day you feel 100% better, but help your body improve by engaging in certain tasks which are in themselves a form of rehabilitation, 
but mm. they don't necessarily seem like ultra hard work in the sense that they are routine things mm. they're normal things that you could take up well this is it if you're going to reclaim your life and do the things that you do this includes all the everyday things as well mm. so so the everyday things that you uh have to be done putting the, the bins out doing uh, all the mundane things uh, you need to reclaim those as well as well as the 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 you know the, the, the three mile hike or the the expedition or whatever it is that you like to do mm. uh, and all of those things help you feel like you, you are you are returning to normal mm. imagine yourself talking to a patient now who's at the beginning of their mm. treatment process they don't really know what to anticipate what would you say to them to help encourage them it's it's difficult uh, but uh, you you can see your progress. It isn't straight line progress. Um, some days are better than others. Some days you go backwards, uh, but the trend um, is forwards, and that that should be taken as encouragement to to press on. Uh, and uh, if you're not, if you have a time when or a day when it isn't so good. Then you just have to accept that and say tomorrow it'll be better and most times it is mm. and and then from there build on uh, not to become downhearted because one morning you get up and feel oh i don't feel so good today there will be days like that uh, it's inevitable uh, if you don't don't feel good then you don't feel good you you do something or you do nothing as you feel you need to mm. but you say i'll be i'll be better tomorrow yeah and then Tomorrow, you, you most likely you are. That's excellent advice. One specific thing for your type of cancer, which I've heard other people talk about, are the restrictions or changes in their appetite or eating habits. Is there anything overall there that is worth mentioning? Yes, it, this, this, this is an area. It's not that it's hugely difficult. It's really it's changing the habits of a lifetime. I see. Uh, we are all brought up where we eat uh, a, a, a fixed small number of meals a day, uh, at, usually at regular fixed kind of times. Mm. Uh, the type of cancer I had uh, has resulted in me being able to eat less in quantity, and also I require uh, my food to be uh, thoroughly chewed and, uh, and, and cut smaller. Uh, but the range of foods I eat is, 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 is normal. Uh, and indeed, uh, a glass of wine is now most welcome. Uh, but uh, because we have to change these habits, uh, which are, in my case, 60, 60 years or more ingrained, uh, it, it, this isn't easy. You have to actually remind yourself to basically eat, eat between meals, mm. which is what you're encouraged not to do for most of your life. Yeah. Uh, so these are the kinds of things where it's, it's hard. It isn't actually hard to eat. It's hard to change your habits. Have you managed to make those adaptations now? I am making those adaptations now, <laughs> yes. It's still hard. Uh, there is still the temptation to become involved in your activities such that you um, uh, don't follow the regime you're trying uh, and you, you consciously have to um, um, make yourself um, alter your regime. I've even at points set my alarm watch mm. so that it goes off to remind me to stop and have a, a drink or, or a snack or something. Whatever helps to, to do that because um, it is important that, that you, uh, you have to change your habits and, and so it's important that you do it. Mm. One last question. Is there anything you'd change regarding your care, how it was delivered for you or the organisation of care in general for you know the way we deliver healthcare. Is there anything that you perceived as a gap that we could improve upon? The most difficult period was the period immediately when you leave hospital, because in hospital you're being there are people around you, professionals who who you can uh, call on at any any moment of the day or night, uh, and and you, you know you, you you don't have any concern that that you know should anything occur. Uh, there's always someone on hand. When you're discharged, it's basically you and your nearest and dearest. Yes. And both of your experiences might be very little in this area, 
uh, and so suddenly you feel somewhat cast adrift and uh, this area is I think is a bit a little bit neglected uh, the support mechanisms go from being kind of constant to being uh, intermittent mm. uh, or scheduled and uh, and that's that's quite difficult I would totally agree with you and I think this is an area we need to really prioritize in the NHS and in other healthcare systems of how to maximize long-term care mm. because in the past we tended to focus everything in the very very early stages mm. even you know at the point of diagnosis and immediate treatment but actually the recovery phase is very long as you kind of mm. point out it's gradual and long and you know blends in with your normal life doesn't it mm. and mm. we should be doing more in those phases but the bottom line is you've done tremendously well yourself in a very very short space of time i mean it's remarkable that you're only really three months down the line now and you're um, you know, markedly back to normal, albeit 60 to 70 percent, that is still in a positive direction. Mm. So that itself will be an encouragement to the viewers who are watching this themselves in different stages. So thanks for coming in today and sharing your story with us. I think it's really valuable information and you've given a very uh, clear and inspirational account. So thanks for sharing that and I wish you all the best for the future. Thank you very much. Take care.